you want to be remembered, and I thought his answer, of course, was just perfect. He goes, I want to be remembered as being a good teammate, respected by all the coaches and my peers. I want everybody to know I love the game of football. And the Denver Broncos have taken Super Bowl 50. Broncos Hello no again, Broncos, Broncos country. country. Welcome really to the Broncos. Broncos. Orange Weekly. No politics, just football. Before the Chevrolets and the lobster, Before I remember Elway's helicopter. I remember. I'm telling you that man was a monster. Uh -huh. Way before he had his hands on a roster. Way before. He turned the Broncos to a powerhouse. Talk. So you know I got a shout out. Shout out to Johnny. Elway, he important, man. Uh -huh. He the reason that I'm always rocking on I'm man. Hey everyone, what's up? My name's Kev Gann. You're watching Beer Broncos. No BS right here on Orange Weekly. Glad to be with you here, guy, uh, with you guys here tonight. Start posting your comments and questions. If you haven't watched our show before, we are here for you guys. We want to answer as many as your questions as possible. Talk about all the things that you guys want to talk about. So if you haven't yet, go ahead and grab that beer. Maybe after the last two weeks you need some booze, whiskey, bourbon, whatever you need, guys. <laughs> go ahead and grab it. Kick back, relax, start posting comments and questions. Uh, and we'll start talking some Broncos football here with you guys. As, I guess I want to say as usual, but it's my honor to always have, welcome uh, David. How you doing, buddy? Cheers. <laughs> it's great to be back, Kev. Good to be here on you in Broncos country. I know we haven't had the uh, the greatest couple of weeks here. 
but uh, we, we, we got to look forward to bigger things ahead, guys. Things, there's a lot of reasons to be optimistic about this team, and we're, we're going to get into a lot of that later. Um, but, you know, obviously some stuff that's going to be holding us back, no pun intended. I see what you did there. <laughs> Andrew, how you doing? He says, uh, I'm already over this game mentally, and I don't want to talk about it. On to Green Bay. Andrew, I completely agree with you. Um, however, this show is mostly reviewing the last week's game. So we are going to spend a lot of time talking about it, <laughs> even though I completely understand where you're coming from. Everyone else, if you're watching, really appreciate you tuning in. Start, push, uh, start posting some comments, questions. We got another Andrew. Andrew Workman, how you doing? Um, Rocky Mountain High. Everyone who's watching right now, can I just give you some props? Because this is Broncos country right here. This is the, <laughs> the real fans. You know what I mean, hey, David? Man. Hey man, oh my gosh, yeah. I can't believe, I mean, the, the people who have come out on a Tuesday night to watch us talk Broncos football, these are committed people. Oh, I mean, it's, we're definitely weeding through the Fairweather fans, and if you're watching here right now, you're not one of those, so appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, Marilupe, how you doing? Uh, Brian, how you doing? Maria, uh, David, here it is, man. Let's let's talk about it. Okay. Holes is over. Let's just start with your take on uh, Garrett Holds, man. Yeah, uh, Garrett Bowles is canceled. Uh, unfortunately, he's not actually canceled because there's nobody else that can play left tackle for the Broncos right now. Uh, nobody on the squad anyway. Uh, you know, if you see Jawan James come back, there's a possibility that Elijah Wilkinson then slides over there to left tackle. But that's literally, for us Broncos fans, that's it. That's the scenario right now. There's no trades for Trent Williams in the offing. Let's not even go there. That's a fantasy. This is what we've got for now, and we're going to be looking there high in the draft this upcoming offseason, first, second round pick. But again, until then, this is what we've got, and this is what we're going to have to deal with for now. Uh, you know, we heard Emmanuel Sanders come out with some pretty strong comments today, uh, some stuff that if he's ready to say it to the media, and you could kind of tell when he was saying it, his frustration at this point of trying to get Garrett Bowles to listen when he says it privately and when other guys say it privately, because I'm sure it's not just Emmanuel. I'm sure there's a lot of guys on the team that are coming up to him and talking to him. But when he comes out and says he's got to get it fixed, he's got a reputation in this league, something Garrett Bowles said earlier this week he doesn't agree with. Emmanuel says if you, you've got that, then it's on you to fix it. And I think he spoke for everybody in Broncos country when he said that. Completely agree. Hey, for the 41 people who are watching right now, you guys are fantastic. Dylan, how you doing? Um, we'll get to your comment here in a second. But again, everyone, my name is Kev Dan. This is David. You're watching Beer Broncos No BS. Start post those comments, questions. Grab your beer, boobin, bourbon, booze, whatever you want to want to grab. I keep doing that, David. I keep doing well, that. I'm going to get yeah, censored. Yeah, so. booze. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, so my comment on this, David. Yeah. Again. I don't want to talk this about this all night long. I want to move on. And people, if you have any comments other than Garrett Bowles, uh, we can talk about those uh, here shortly. My biggest concern, it's not even concern. This is why I'm done with Garrett Bowles. Is he essentially, I mean, I can even read you his quote here in a second. But he doesn't even admit that he has a problem. Um, he goes on to say, and I'll just go ahead and quote him so I don't get in trouble for misquoting. Um, he says, quote, I build a reputation for myself in this league of holding. I disagree with it, to be honest. There are some calls I disagree with, but there are some things that I understand. I have to go back and watch this film, see what I can do. Uh, but he says, that's unfortunate that they keep coming after me, but it is what it is. Like I said, I disagree with some of them. I've got to move on. Here's my thing. He, it, it sounds like he doesn't even realize that he has a real problem. And so yeah. how can, even if you have the best offensive line coach in the, in the whole NFL and Mike Munchak, how could we possibly trust what Garrett Bowles is trying to say when he comes out? The other half of what he's saying is, I disagree with what they're, you know, what they're doing to me. Well, and this is why, you know, well, a lot of people like me in Broncos country who have been Bowles defenders up until now are just, are, we're, I think we're, at, least at this point, everybody's on the same page. We're all fed up. We're all done. Because it's one thing to realize that you have something that's not going right for you and you're trying to fix it and it's not going well you know we've all had that in our lives where some issue in our life is just not going well no matter how we try to fix it 
if that was the case, you know, if he was dedicated to actually getting this fixed and worked on, I would have some faith because he would have a great teacher to work with in Mike Munchak. Sure. And even if he'd been trying his hardest before to be to uh, be a guy who was actually working for this thing in in tandem with having that great coach is going to eventually pay dividends. But if he doesn't want to try for it, I'm done. You know what? Better luck somewhere else next year because you're not going to be on this squad anymore. Andrew Workman says, why do we have to deal with it? Why not next man up? I totally agree with you, man. The problem is there's literally no next man on this roster right now. There's two people on this roster who are physically capable of playing left tackle, Garrett Bowles and Elijah Wilkinson. Everybody else, Nobody else has played there or sniffed the position before. Uh, so Elijah Wilkinson, unfortunately, is tied up at right tackle with the injury to Juwan James. So... I'm with you. I hope they find a way to get um, get uh, get some another body in there at some point. But for right now, there's nobody on the roster who can do it. And here's the reason why. Uh, what was that, Andrew? The reason why Andrew is because, yeah, we could go out on the street and just find somebody who's played left tackle sometime in their life and say, "Cool, we're done with Garrett Bowles. Get in there." You got to remember that's Joe Flacco's blind side. And if okay. If I were to choose between Garrett Bowles, who would hold every time, but more often than not prevent Joe Flacco from getting hit from behind and driven in the ground every time, or somebody else who's going to get run over and you know allow Garrett Bowles or I'm sorry allow Joe Flacco to continuously get hit, okay, well in that case I'd rather have Garrett Bowles in the meantime to keep our quarterback standing up. It's it's bad versus bad. There's no yeah. good solution yeah. there. But if I had to choose the lesser of two evils. Okay, well, Garrett Bowles is going to keep killing drives, but Joe Flacco isn't getting hit from his blind side, which is just – you see how, how many quarterbacks went down this last week? And what, three? Four well, to and include Simeon? Sure, and it's not just that. It's the fact that you've got a fairly complicated running offense with this Scangarello offense, and there's not a lot of guys that you can just pull off the street who are available – First of all, there's not a lot of guys who are on the street available to play left tackle anyway. We've gone over uh, tackle depth in the NFL at some length on this show, and it's just not available. So guys who are able to play or back up play are playing somewhere or are backing up somewhere. So you've got to find a guy who can step into this offense and play it, you know, week one if you're trying to find a street free agent. It just doesn't seem that, that feasible to me. Um, Andrew asks again, what about maybe Dalton Reisner? Uh, moving over you know Dalton take Reisner played tackle right tackle uh, in college some but at that point you're creating two holes on your offensive line you're putting a guy at left tackle who's never played left tackle before in the at the NFL level where he's never played it even in college level you also have to then find somebody to fill in Dalton Reisner's guard spot and again until Jawan James comes back from his injury you just don't have anybody who can step in there. There are no more reliable backups. At this point, you've just got question marks. And so, you know, you're filling in holes with guys like Austin Schlotman and just praying that it'll work. I, you know, at this point, maybe it's better than Garrett Bowles, but the chances seem pretty low to me. Uh, Andrew says, sounds like excuses. I, I, dude, this is the no BS show. If there was, the, I wish they were excuses, man. I wish we had an option, but. <laughs> There really isn't any right now. And so if you think it sounds like excuses, look, I'm fed up with uh, fed up with him too. I really believe that Coach Fangio, if he had the, if he had an option, would say, dude, get out of here. You're done. He essentially he wasn't the only reason we lost that game. You know, the it was a team effort to not really show up for the, at least for the offense for the first three quarters. And we can talk about that. But Garrett yeah. Bowles did not help his case. Brian says Cleo Max says he will help him in the offseason. Hopefully it went uh it went. Uh, he'll be there next year. So I mean, it was cool of Cleo Mack to do that. Um, I gained a little bit of respect for him, you know, to offer that. Uh, we'll see if he's even with the Broncos next year, but but who knows? Uh, let's yeah. see. Move on to some more of these guys. Um, let's see. Maria, how you doing? He says every time there's a big play, boom, flag. Yep, I think we heard that agnosium on Sunday. Um, Maria from Can uh, Canada, how you doing? Up by the Canadian border there. Ivan, let's see. I don't know why he's still with the team. King got cut for uh, losing yards. Why is he not getting cut? I think we just covered that. Unfortunately, it is what it is. Um, then he said, I, I, would, uh, I want to see a side-by-side -side video of the game clock in Chicago, Chicago uh, QB calling timeout with one second left. Okay, so guys, let's move on from Garrett Bowles. We're all super freaking frustrated with him. Yeah. If you guys just tuned in, my name is Kev Dan. This is David uh, next to me. Helping me out tonight, one of our fantastic co-hosts on Beer Broncos No BS. Grab that beer, grab that uh, 
bourbon, booze, whatever you want, and start posting mm -hmm. comments, questions, which you already have a ton of. Um, so let's talk about that, David. Yeah. Real time, real time, it seemed absolutely insane to believe that that happened. What, what was your take on all of it? You know, it. I can't see how Mitch Trubisky could possibly have called a timeout on the field in real time with one second left. If you told me the coach had been had a referee in his hip pocket and had run down the field to where the play was happening right there and then called timeout as soon as he saw the play go down, I could see it. But I haven't seen it, and I'd like to see an angle on that as well. But there's really, I mean, even if you see the angle, they're not gonna. There's nothing we can do about it. There's that result, unfortunately, will stay the same, no matter kind of what video review comes to light that may have some evidence that maybe they didn't get the timeout called in time. You know, it's just a possibility. But you know, we also have to look at a few factors on that play the busting coverage that allowed exactly. a completion to get that far. You also had a horrible, you know, roughing the passer call. Again, some officiating question marks, more than a few officiating question marks from this game. But that's something you can't really control as an NFL team. You can control what you can control. And they let the game slip away when it mattered most, yeah. uh, you know, at the end of the day. They played really hard on both sides of the ball they grinded out what could have been a win with some mile high magic there at the end we've seen it happen before especially with home openers it's you know that's a beautiful part of being in a broncos game in september anything can happen uh but it just didn't you know fall our way this time and there's a lot of reasons that happened bad officiating was part of it but you know there was also just some miss miss coaches mi uh, coaching miscues and some player miscues as well that we you know as fans have to acknowledge a little bit Hey guys, it looks like uh, the watch party on Beer Bronco, or I'm sorry, on Broncos World Order got cut off. So we're going to move on, David. I'll have you talk about one of these other ones. Let's see. Uh, Dylan says, so Andrew says, agree to disagree. And that's fine here on Orange Weekly. We can we can disagree, man. There's no problem with that. This um, is, we love having people come on like this and challenge us a little bit. This is what we're here for, guys. Exactly. We want to come and talk football with passionate football fans. Keep it coming. Uh, Dylan says it'd be nice to see Ramsey in orange and blue. No, it won't happen, but that would be huge for our secondary. Uh, David, what's your take on that, man? Man, that would be interesting. Um, Jalen Ramsey is a player I think of as, I don't want to call him the Antonio Brown of cornerbacks because he hasn't been that much of a problem in the league yet. But as far as that Jaguars team goes, you know, he's definitely a guy with a big personality and a guy who would step into a locker room like ours with maybe not the most vocal leaders on defense. I think of Von Miller as a leader, certainly, but he's not a guy who is, I think of as a vocal leader, certainly not even as much as Emmanuel Sanders is, but, you know, Sanders on the offensive side of the ball. I don't know about the team chemistry with a guy like Ramsey, I guess is what I'm saying huge talent um obviously top five top three maybe top one cornerback in the nfl uh, arguably but just a guy who can come in and mess with your team chemistry unless you have a really really strong base there and i think with a core of young guys like we have that could mess up the team chemistry a little bit so to me i mean obviously if he got traded to our team i would be absolutely thrilled but i just don't know if i see it as a natural fit uh, the other thing you got to think of is, you know, are we willing to give up draft picks for them? Because I mean, that's what that's what they want. You know, if if we're gonna if they're gonna give up something like that, not only pro probably do they want another player, but they're gonna want some draft picks. Oh and God, are the Broncos really in a position to give that up when we're yeah, still no. in a rebuilding phase? And the Dolphins, I mean, we just saw the Dolphins get a first-round pick for Minka Fitzpatrick, who was their first-round pick a year ago, and certainly has not. Uh, accumulated the yeah. credentials that a Jalen Ramsey has in this league. So if you're going to get one first round pick for that guy, how much are you going to have to pay for Jalen Ramsey? It's, you know, you're going to kind of have to mortgage your future for a very win now move. And the Broncos are not one Jalen Ramsey away from a playoff spot at this point. Completely agree. Hey, if you're watching on Broncos world order, I think I just had to restart the, uh, the watch party. So if you're coming back in, start pushing your comments, questions. If I didn't get to them before, Please repost them, but that goes for everyone else. Keep posting comments, questions. That's what we're here for. My name's Kev Dan. I'm with David here tonight, and we are talking Broncos. Let's see. Um, we talked to Nicholas. How you doing? We talked about uh, if would we have won if the game expired. Uh, Keith says he thinks we got robbed. So 
again, my my take is, yeah, do I really agree with what the coach, what the uh, the officials did on the field there? No, but David, why did it take three quarters for our offense to show up? We got the field yeah. goal in the first quarter, nothing yeah. in the second and third. So why? Yeah. My question is more. Okay, fine. Screw the officials. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, that we the the Broncos offense just did not do enough to win that game in the end. They almost did. It was almost enough for it was almost enough for them to go just completely missing for two quarters and a half and show back up again for the fourth. But it it wasn't, and it shouldn't have been because when your offense goes missing for that length of time, you probably don't deserve to win the football game. It's just the end. Of the I mean, so yeah, like we said earlier, we can go back over the officiating calls, and there were a lot of bad ones, but at the end of the day, it comes back down to, did your offense execute? And the answer is no. Um, we've got some questions about the defense, which I think is uh, yeah. a reasonable concern for Broncos country here. Uh, Omar asks, why is our D line struggling? Uh, Andrew says it's our interior line and linebackers. Uh, Keith asks, where is Vaughn? And then Brian says, we need Vaughn and Chubb very badly. It's hard to disagree with any of those statements, but all, all really of those or and questions. It's all pretty valid stuff. Um, the defense has not performed to an elite level at this point in the season, let's say. They're not a bottom of the league defense. I, actually, I think that's they were in the bottom half of the league before this week. Um, they probably gained some position just as far as yards allowed. And I think they did play better as the game went along, it seemed to me. I mean, they never really got a pass rush. That was one area they just they never got consistent pressure at all, which is not something you expect to say about a team that has Bradley Chubb and Von Miller coming off the edge. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, I, you know, one, one thing that we, we point was pointed out earlier was that Vaughn's been playing 95% of snaps this season, as opposed to the 70% or so of snaps that he usually plays. But I don't know how much effect that has, you know, this early in the season, you can't just point to that and say, that's why he's not having success rushing, rushing the passer. You know, maybe it's just that these these teams are scheming towards these guys so heavily because they they don't think there's an interior rush threat anywhere else on the defensive line. Um, you know, we saw even that last play of the game. I noticed where they, or the last pass play for Chicago where they got into field goal range. I noticed Draymond Jones out there, a guy who you know flashed a couple of times in preseason, but I didn't think was ready for the big dance uh, quite yet. And so you saw maybe a little bit of a desperation on the coach's part to just get an interior pass rush wherever they could find it, and it didn't work. And so, you know, who knows? I mean, you know, trust this coaching staff, I hope, to come up with something a little better um, for next week. But, I, you know, against Green Bay, I, you better have that fixed quickly. You know what I mean? If they don't find that mojo in a hurry, they're going to find themselves down 21 nothing. Yep. midway through the second quarter and there'll be no looking back from there yep hey uh, for my own personal profile sorry guys the comments aren't moving over to the main source but we got uh linnea and andrew how are you guys doing i'll go and say hi uh neil how are you doing i know you're one of our big fans there uh neil so i'm sorry i didn't get your comments sooner um don't know why the the comments aren't transferring but uh neil says we have some alcohol to look forward to um Let's see. Andrew says Broncos are my dark horse for Super Bowl up there with the Dolphins. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, we'll not even go there. Yeah, Molly, how not. you doing? Um, <laughs> let's see. Let me go back here. Neil says, quote from the Mad Fanatic. I just decided I'm unretiring from hi hiatus already. Honestly, I love making Broncos fans music. So if you didn't hear, uh, the music we start the show with uh, in our main credits scene is from the Mad Fanatic. He, he puts out a ton of awesome Broncos music. Make sure he lets us use his music for free and it's fantastic. So make sure no, it's I mean, if you're a Bronco fan, you love Broncos specific music, check out the Mad Fanatic. He is yeah. awesome and he's coming back. Um, Neil says, rebuilding since 2016, time to finish this over budget, underperforming roadkill experiment. I am running low on John Elway patience. Um, <laughs> so, David, my take on that uh, for you, Neil, is yeah, we've been in rebuilding mode since 2016, but we had. And in, uh, an absolutely terrible coaching staff that didn't help us move forward past that at all. So do you kind of see ourselves at year one of rebuilding, even though it's really the third year? I, I have a hard time getting to there. Okay. Um, it's for me, the John Elway question is not settled in my mind at all. 
uh, there's a lot of things he's done well and a lot of things that I think he's gotten credit for longer than they've been actively helping the team. Right. But, you know, one thing that really, he just looks like he's guessing at the quarterback position sometimes. Really, he's just kind of grasping at straws at a certain point, it feels like to me. And maybe Drew Locke's going to work out. You know, I don't know enough about him. He flashed in preseason. He also showed that he had a long way to go. And missing six weeks of practice with a thumb injury, at least you know six weeks, is not ideal for somebody who you really, really want to be your future. Right. Uh, and to really take, ideally take over the reins in year two. So, yeah, I, you know, Joe Flacco is a nice stopgap, I guess, but... You know, Broncos country, we can't expect anything for him to be anything more than that this season. I think what we've seen out of Joe Flacco thus far is about as good as it's going to get. I don't think he's going to improve his level of play at any point. And with the young skill players around him this season, this is kind of why I think it's going to be a, a late rising team this season, because we got young, young skill players experienced quarterback, but who's not going to lift them so much. They're going to have to lift themselves. And I think they will. It's just going to take some time. Back to, uh, circling back to John Elway a little bit, he's got a little more a little more time from me, but not a lot. This, right. you know, I, I think Drew Locke has to be his last quarterback pick, one way or another. If it works out, great. If it doesn't, that might be it. Might be time to move on. So John Elway has uh, after this year two more years on his uh, on his contract. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and. I, Look, I, I love John. I can see them moving on from that contract before it starts. Or yeah, before it ends, we're not going to cut them early. Yeah, uh, and I think all of Broncos country loves what John Elway has done for the Broncos. There's two Super Bowls, bringing in Peyton Manning. Because let's face it, if it weren't for John Elway, Peyton Manning would not have been on the Broncos. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now we're in a situation where, look, he, he, you know, 2014, 15, 16 were all terrible drafts. Uh, 17 was a terrible draft. We have a handful. I can't even count on one hand the number of players that are still on the team from those four or five drafts. Mm-hmm. So though, there's a lot of it on John Elway. And that I can, counts, yeah. at the end of the day, it's all about money, right? If John yeah. Elway's the GM and he's not winning games, he's not you know building a team that's going to the playoffs every year, at least the majority of the years, he's gone, man. I mean, that's it, you know, and I understand because you've got to kind of tear it down and start over and we've had a couple of losing seasons and that happens to a franchise sometimes. I know it's not been the tradition here in Broncos country, but it's ha- it happens in the NFL. But if you can't get your team back to a place where it is building towards the play, you know, moving forward, taking steps forward, you've got to keep your franchise moving forward. Standing still is the same as moving back because the other teams around you are moving forward. Kansas City is moving forward. Oakland is moving in a direction. We haven't seen which, if it's going to be forward or not yet, but they're moving. And if we're standing still, then, I mean, you just, that's not a recipe to put a winning football team on the field week after week. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, guys, keep posting your comments, questions. If you're watching on the Broncos World Order feed, uh, I know there's some issues with the watch party going on over there. So keep posting some comments, questions. Uh, we got some more here um, that are actually, I think, showing up um, on both. Let's see. I talk about where is Vaughn. Uh, Gary brings up a good point or a, uh, an interesting uh, argument that I've heard around Broncos country. He says trade Vaughn Miller. Now, David, what is what would we expect from Vaughn trading Vaughn Miller? Because right now, I, I don't think we would get. We definitely wouldn't get a player. Uh, oh, we might get great. some late yeah. round draft picks. No, you don't trade. If you trade Von Miller, it's because you're tearing it down. Right. So you don't trade him for a player. You would trade him for picks. And that would equal, I mean, two first round picks is a minimum for me. That's what Khalil Mack's price was. Von Miller's been a Super Bowl MVP. You get two first round picks for him. That's the end of the argument for for me for trading Von Miller. If it doesn't start with two first round picks, I'm immediately not interested. Yep. Take it somewhere else. Completely agree. Uh, Derek's asking about Todd Davis. We got, also got to keep in mind Callahan. They were they were both limited in practice last week. Uh, mm-hmm. I didn't see what the what they did today. Uh, they were questionable for Sunday's game. Um, David, those two players though that that what kind of impact do you think that's going to have on our defense? Other than, dude, I think that's going to have a big impact. 
Uh, I would, I think, shore up the middle of our defense and the back end a little bit. We saw Isaac Yadam get picked on a little bit again this week. Um, he mixed in a couple of decent plays at the end in coverage, but again, he's a young player, and we're putting him a lot of responsibility on him right away. Having a guy like Callahan that knows this defense very well and has shown ability to play very well in it would be astronomically important for a defense like this. Um, you know, just in these situations like we saw, you know, there was a play, I think maybe it was in the first or second quarter, uh, where Chicago completed a uh, pass to their tight end short of the sticks. Uh, Yadam came up to make this, the tackle, but the guy just ran right through an arm tackle and kept on moving past the sticks for a first down. It's just plays like that that can keep the offensive momentum for your team um, if you stop them there, if you make that tackle and force them to punt when you're, you know, the offense has already driven down the field once and scored a field goal, it was a hot day, you keep the defense on the field, you keep them sweating, you know, maybe you get a little more ment momentum built up, can, can com completely change the complexion of a game. I'm overstating the case a little bit, but it is great to have a guy like Callahan in there. I think Todd Davis is probably a little closer as far as it goes, as far as his injury goes probably to coming back but it would be really nice to have both of those guys out there. That would be more than a luxury. It was kind of a necessity at this point. I'm expecting one, if not both, to be back this week. Uh, I haven't seen if anyone's done it yet, but could somebody post a comment or a question about uh, Coach Fangio going for the two-point conversion there? Because I really kind of <laughs> want to talk about that. But uh, we'll, we'll keep going with the other right. comments that are already here. <laughs> um, let's see. Jared, the way I see it, we're uh, – uh, we're on the verge of a breakthrough. These two games are not at all blowouts to two decent teams. I think a few adjustments and we'll be okay. So, David, how, in your opinion, how close are we to being that team that's 0-2 to being that team that's 2-0? and and Garrett Bowles. And is and competitive. Change. Yeah, we're Garrett Bowles and change away. Uh, okay. You know, it's, it's one big Garrett Bowles and then a lot of little things on defense is the difference between us being 0-2 and 2-0, and and I think. Now, I'm, ex again, overstating that just a little bit because, again, there was, a, uh, uh, there was a stretch for two quarters against Chicago where the whole offense just disappeared, didn't, didn't see the field much, and weren't effective when they were on it, and it's on all of them, uh, including, you know, the offensive coordinator's got to, you know, find a little bit better calls for his players, which I think, again, as you've been watching these games go on, they've been improving a little bit. You've kind of seen these guys get a little more accustomed to the scheme as the week's been going on. And it's a tough scheme. It's a pretty complicated yeah. zone running scheme that they're trying to run. And, you know, of course, it, play action plays a huge part of it, but there's a lot of moving parts in a play action play to keep it, keep it going. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen guys like Cortland Sutton make a big step already into year two and look like a different guy. Uh, even in this last game where he was kind of held catchless until the third quarter and, and didn't have as huge a game as he had in the first, you could see him becoming a different player than last season, more than just a jump ball specialist, a guy who shows up in big moments with good awareness. I was really impressed, especially with how he was aware at the sticks at the right. end of that game and where he needed to be to get first downs. Uh, but, you know, that's and I love the play calling at the end, like you said. Go for that two-point conversion. Go for the win. You're a coach who hates death by inches, and your team has been getting gashed by inches all day long. So take that moment into your hands and try to win the game. I love that call. I hope we see more of it in the future. We're I just hope to. it ends up being, you know, a win at the end of that 30 seconds or whatever. Yeah, that that's not a call that's a one-time thing. Yeah. Coach Fangio is going to be aggressive. I think he's yeah. also telling his team and Broncos country, I believe in this team. We can go for the win. Why, why would we try to settle for a tie and then yeah. maybe try to win it in, in overtime? We have a chance to win it right now. I believe in our guys. You yeah. would not have seen that the last couple of years. And I hate yeah. comparing it to a couple of years ago, but there has been some growth. And that's why, that's why I want to go back and at least revisit it a little bit. You know, yeah. Coach Fangio yeah. is the guy that is going to be aggressive and make those kinds of calls. And I, I, you do not know how, how much I appreciate that. I was so confused when I saw that, David. I was like, yeah. why why is he doing this? What, right. what is this for? Oh, right. are we actually doing this? <laughs> We're going to go for the win. What? Okay. What? All right. I, all right. I guess and it worked. You play these games. You, you play to win the game, I right. suppose. And, and it uh, worked. That's yeah, the crazy thing. 
to be, yeah, absolutely. And it's kind of the metaphor, I think. That's why I think this team might come on a little bit late. I think this coaching staff is working with these guys and they're getting the buy-in that they want from these guys. Yeah. But it's just going to take a little more time for it all to come together. And that's why I'm starting to, you know, I, I said earlier, you know, I've adjusted a little bit down. Eight and eight at this point is absolutely the absolute top of the ceiling for this team it's you know six and ten seven and nine may be a little more likely even but i do think when you get into november december there's nobody who's going to be looking at the broncos and saying that's an easy out that's an easy win for us that's going to be a tough tough team down the stretch and coming you know into these stretch of games that we played already and are going to continue to play it's going to just tough have to toughen this team up further because they're all going to be hard games uh let's see Rama, Ramos, how you doing? He says, do you think Fant was worth a number 10 pick? So me personally, I think yes, in the regard of having him be a receiving tight end. Yeah. However, with our injuries to the tight end room, we're now asking him to block as well, which David, I think we saw how well <laughs> Noah Fant blocks. It's He's a rookie, a hopefully in, in a couple of years he'll get Noah there. Fant on his blocking. It's right. still a work in progress. But do you think he was worth a number 10 pick? Well, and it's important to keep in mind that we didn't really give the number 10 pick for him. We traded the number True. 10 pick for the number True. 20 pick. So we, if the real, the real good way to think about it is we tra- we um, got him for the number 20 pick, Andrew Locke, because that's what that other Steelers pick ended up being. I think we packaged that to move back up into the second round yeah. to get Drew Locke. So that's kind of what it turned into. And I think for right now, yeah, it's worth it. Uh, rookie tight ends struggle in the league. It just it happens most, right. most oh, yeah. often. Um, you know, we've already seen him, you know, there's a play or two every game where he catches one beautiful pass for 15 or 20 yards. And then a couple of plays a game where he really looks like a rookie or gets called for a holding penalty or gets absolutely punked by Khalil Mack, which I mean, I I don't put that on him as much as the guy who thought it was a good idea to leave him out there on an Island with Khalil Mack. It's running out of options at that point. Garrett Bowles wasn't wasn't doing it. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Unless you want another guaranteed 10 yard hold, but he just ran right by him. Um, So, you know, it's going to have growing pains with Noah Fant, but I'm excited for his potential because there is just every once a game or twice a game where you just see him on these beautiful plays out running a linebacker by five yards in space. It's, It's really something to see. That's what I'm really looking forward to and especially hoping he can develop into a red zone target a little more. Completely agree. Hey guys, my name is Kev Dan. I am with David here on Beer Broncos No BS. Here to answer as many as your comments as we possibly can. There's been a lot of you guys tonight. I really appreciate the turnout. You guys are fantastic. If you could hit that share button for us. Don't forget to uh, leave a review on our Facebook page if you don't mind. Uh, If you didn't know about us here at Orange Weekly, we are here almost every day of the week. We got the Tuesday night show. Uh, Tuesday or Wednesday is when our post-game podcast comes out. Probably around Friday, Saturday morning is when our pregame podcast comes out. Uh, we're doing little shows here and there in, in between all of that. Uh, Sunday, we have our half or game day. We have our pregame uh, live show as well as our halftime hash show. We are also probably going to start incorporating some sort of uh, postgame, just little, you know, chat session with you guys if you want. Uh, but basically here at Orange Weekly, we're here for you all over the place. So make sure you follow us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, whichever one you listen to your podcasts on. Uh, and just keep watch for all the different things that we have here on Orange Weekly. If you haven't given our page a like yet, go ahead and do that. Um, but just keep in mind, if it comes to Broncos content, that's what we're here for, guys. That's what we're here that's for. It. Um, let's see. So let's see. Soila, I hope I saying your name right. How you doing? Orange Crush for life. That's what I'm talking about. Sean, love my Broncos. Call her a native, but we are so doomed. Everyone is. Uh, everyone is so much better than us in our division. And that's, I mean, I, I don't know now, if I'm all doom and gloom, uh, Sean, but... Now, I saw the Chargers play the Lions on Sunday, and didn't they you? just gave that say. game away like it was a goodwill, okay? So, I, you know, anything's possible when you play the Chargers. That's like having two home games. You know, most all right, most of the teams in the, in the division probably are better than us on, uh, as football teams right now. At least but, the Chiefs. Yeah, any, this is why we play the games, guys. Anything can happen. I mean, the Dolphins almost won last week, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I, you know, there was there was some – let's not get into that. See, Francis says it's only the third game of the season. Have some faith. Elway didn't move mountains in his la- in his first uh, uh, first or second year. 
completely agree. I mean, it's it's guys. I know it's painful, especially when we were you know spoiled by Peyton Manning for four years. Uh, maybe this is the football gods, you know, evening us out a little, <laughs> a little yeah. bit, you know, because we were spoiled, man. Uh, yeah. But uh, it is going to take some time. But I, I really believe that Broncos are going to be back. We're not going to be a bottom of the barrel team for years and years and years. This team will yeah. get built yeah. back up. Yeah. Um, let's see, Dylan says we could be one hell of a team if we played a complete four quarters, like we do when we went to the potential uh, game-winning touchdown. Completely agree. Um, Andrew says in that situation, somebody was calling timeout before it hit the ground. There was one second left. It is what it is. Yeah. Uh, I also think that Trubisky, you know, told the referee right before, you know, before he went to the ball, we're calling a timeout as soon as this play is done, you know? So there yeah, was, it is what it is. It, it is what it best. is. Yeah. Gary says no pass rush, uh, pass rush because no fly zone. So question to you, uh, David, is it more of a lack of pass rush rush that's impacting our, secondary or our secondary having trouble covering people down the field that's impacting our pass rush or i mean it's it's both right what now, came I first the chicken or the egg good yeah honestly neither of them is playing to the potential that they have right now i think there's both there's room for improvement on both uh you know the ball is coming out quick um it has been both weeks and that's kind of what the game plan uh is kind of going to be against the broncos until they've proven they can kind of shut that down and keep all those plays that are in front of the sticks in front of the sticks long enough to get translate to fourth downs. Once they do that, and especially once they clean up their, the run defense a little bit, like Brian says, that's gotta be, gotta be shorn up. I think it got a little better this week. It did not get a lot better this week. That was one of the game areas in the game where I thought we really did improve as the game went on, but taken as a whole, it wasn't really good. And you know, Green Bay, that's what they really want to do this season is run the football and establish their offense based on the run like we're seeing a lot of teams try to do this season, mm-hmm. kind of in that Rams model just with Matt LaFleur. Um, so, you know, we're going to we're gonna have to shut down that run game. And, I mean, you know, it's as, as impossible as it sounds in Green Bay. It's like, all right, shut down the run game so you only have to deal with Aaron Rodgers. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, you mean maybe the most talented quarterback to ever play the game, Aaron Rodgers? Yeah, that guy. So it's, I mean, this is not the really the best week for get right game, but boy, do they need to get right on defense in both phases. I think this is a game we can win, man. <laughs> no, I, there's a, I, I think do. there's I, a real chance. Can. But can. that's the thing. I mean, you, you tell that to most Broncos fans right now, and that's the reaction. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Uh, but if you look at how we play, the, if we put together three solid quarters, let's not even ask for a full game, three solid quarters, this is a game we can win, man. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Um, we, I just, you know, I'll believe it when I see it. Oh, yeah, no, I'm right there with you. you know? I just, I see the potential this team has. Yeah. Uh, and I think you say you're right. We're, we're solid Garrett Bowles and maybe a few changes on defense away and, one of those things can happen this next week, you know, yeah. especially if we get Callahan and Todd Davis back. Uh, Boy, that'd be those nice. changes on defense. That'd be nice. I think that could nice. change a lot. We'll just have to see if we get them back. Yep. Uh, James says we were spoiled for 17 years with Elway. Good point. Very good point. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Maya says we are still better than the Dolphins. Completely agree. At least there's, you know, a couple teams worse than us out there. James says no BS. We're going to go 0-3. Well, I mean, this is the no BS show, so... You know, we like that. We like your no BS take. Yeah, that's uh, I'm not going to comment against that because, well, uh, while I think there's a chance we can win, I think there's also a hell of a chance we could lose. But mm-hmm. it's 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 our team and we're going to see what they can do and hopefully they come out uh, swinging with a better defense and better offense. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. George, we need to develop a running game. Let the D rest and better offensive plays. I'm shocked to say this, but I thought Luco would be the problem. But that coach, uh, but that coach looks lost during the game. So, uh, Fluco's a new one, George. I'm not gonna lie. That's I haven't heard that one before. Now, honestly, look, yeah, Flacco did throw an interception last week, um, and he's only had what two touchdowns. But that number should be four, you know, if you don't include if you include the drop passes there in the end zone. So, yeah. so David, do you how much of the problem do you think is between Flacco and do you really think Coach Fangio looks lost per se? No, uh, I don't know. I don't want lost. I think 
Coach Fangio is still adjusting to coaching on the sideline, and that's going to come. But the man knows football, and a man who knows football as much as Coach Fangio does isn't going to be lost in a football environment. He may physically not know what to do with himself sometimes, but his mind is in the game at all times, and that, I don't think, is uh, ever in question as far as I'm concerned. Flacco, you know, like I said earlier, I think we've seen peak Flacco. I think this is as good as we're going to get out of Joe Flacco. Uh, I do think we have to start to establish the run game a little better. It's another one of the fa factors that got better as the game wore on this this last week. Uh, we really kind of ran up, and that's a tough Chicago defense. This is one area where I think it's fair to say that's a tough Chicago defense. Yep. We didn't have as much success running the ball as I would have liked to, but kind of like Dylan, I'm not completely sold on this Packers defense. So let's see if we can run the ball right at him a little bit. That's one thing I'll really want to see if we can establish early, especially if we get the ball first. I want a ball control drive. We saw that they were able to do that for stretches against the Bears where they were able to control the ball, uh, drive down the field methodically, nice long seven-minute, eight-minute drives, a lot of running plays sprinkled in there. We saw Royce Freeman look really effective. Philip Lindsay also looked good. So we just have to stick with that and maybe commit to the run a little bit earlier. Uh, you know, obviously you've got to make him respect your pass game, but keep the ball on the ground and kind of run it at him and just keep, you know, if you play a ball possession game, that's, I think, your path to victory in Green Bay. Control yeah. the time of possession and keep the ball out of Aaron Rodgers' hands. I was surprised we ran the, we uh, passed the ball more than we ran the ball in the first mm -hmm. half. I believe it was 18, from what I counted, it was 18 pass and 12 run. I'd like mm. to see that number be more even. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, yeah. uh, even more runs than passes, if you ask me, because, you know, we say we're a team that's going to commit to the run, and yeah, yeah, maybe it's not working early on, but man, especially yeah. in Denver, that's going to, you saw how gassed the, uh, even Khalil Mack was at the end of the Broncos game. Sure. I mean, they out. were tired. Yeah. So why not use that a little bit more to our advantage early on and just keep running the ball and see if we can wear them down a little bit more, especially in Denver, so... Uh, well, I would have liked to see that a little different in the first half, but that's just my take. And I think a lot of it may have had to do with the holding penalties. You know, <laughs> of course, Garrett Bowles, but, you know, Ron Leary had a couple also. And I think I feel like Noah Fant had one as yep, well. So, you know, just when you get behind the sticks like that into those first and 20 situations, it's just you kind of have to throw the football a little bit. But you're right. I would like to see a little more balance in that as well. And I think the team would like to be able to establish right. the run a little bit more than that. So let's just, you know, that's one thing that's going to have to be cleaned up is those penalties. If you really want to have that effective first down, second down running game. Yep. Hey guys, my name is Kev Dan. I'm with David. This is Beer Broncos No BS. Appreciate you guys joining us here tonight. Hit that share button for us. Keep posting comments, questions. You guys are fantastic. Dylan says he's going to be a hell of a tight end. He's a Hawkeye fan and he was a stud. Hawkinson was our big kid. Uh, tight end Fant was the catching tight end hybrid wideout. Uh, he is okay at blocking, but we'll definitely need to work on it. Yeah, I think uh, over the next three, four years, you're going to see Noah Fant be a lot more well-rounded tight end. Um, yeah, but much. when you're talking about the injuries we have, uh, you know, we can't really afford to be sending uh, Noah Fant out in the, uh, you know, out on a seam route, you know, out out down the field. We just can't afford that right now. Wow. Um, so I it mean, is limiting how he plays. I don't know. Yeah, I you know we've I, I don't know that they're gonna they're gonna limit him at all as far as that goes because that's that's what you need your tight end to do. Right. At a certain point, I don't think you can kind of hide him just because you're afraid of of getting him injured. I understand that's the concern, and there's not a lot of depth there for sure. I think we can all uh, appreciate that in Broncos country, but at the end of the day, you know your tight ends are a very important part of the offense, especially this offense, and he's going to do what you're, you're going to have to ask him to do what you're going to have to ask him to do, you know? Right. Um, I do think that he can become a little bit more an effective weapon. And like you said, in the next two to three years, I think he's going to really be a good player in the NFL. Yeah. Um, Joey says Freeman looks like a different back from last year. And Dylan agrees, says Freeman looks really good. I'm really excited about Royce Freeman in this offense. And like you guys have been saying, he has looked electric this year. I don't want to say he's looked better than Philip Lindsay because they do different things, but he has been very, very good running between the tackles. He finishes runs strong. He's always moving forward when he finishes his runs. That's something I've noticed about him. He doesn't get those weak leg tackles, ankle tackles, shoestring tackles. He steps through them and keeps his legs churning. 
we're going to see big things out of Royce Freeman if he can continue to develop like this. I think so. Um, yeah, Joey says they just need to leave 72 alone. Everyone knows they're just out to get him. I promise, Joey, we will be a lot, a lot nicer and say nothing mean about 72 for the rest of the show. Scout's honor. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's see. James asks, what is our win-lose record since Super Bowl 50? I know we went 8-8 eight and eight that first year after. Uh, I believe I saw over the last two years up until this last week. We are 11-23, and 23, if I remember that number right. Oof. That's not good. Um, nope. I still want to... I want to forget the last two years in the sense that the the leadership we had just was was holding us back. We had no forward momentum. I think with this coaching staff, uh, Vic Fangio is a much you know stronger leader. Uh, he's 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 driving the team to improvement, and it's only been two weeks. You know we can't. There's not a lot of data points there to really compare it to. But by the end of the season, I fully expect that Coach Fangio is not only going to be a better head coach himself after adjusting to you know calling plays on the field, uh, but the team is going to uh, have more buy-in into what he's saying and what he's trying to do. Uh, and doing things like going for that two points at the end of the game, David, I think mm-hmm. that is a huge step forward. So yeah. that one data point right there already has my confidence boosted. I guarantee you that those players on the field yeah. got a confidence boost in that as well. I'm sure some of them were like, wait, we're doing what? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just to know that the coach trusts them in that situation to go and get the job done is going to build confidence and a relationship between the coach and the players as the season goes. Yep. Uh, Jesus uh, says, "Run the ball. Uh, running the ball will establish the passing game. We need to stop playing like women. Give them uh, smash mouth football, Bronco style football. Uh, let uh, start strong and finish strong." So, um, again, this goes back to what I was saying before of run run the ball uh, maybe even a little bit more than passing the ball. Yeah. But like you said, those holding penalties, I didn't even consider that when you're in first and 20, you can't really run it up the middle for three yards. That's yeah. not going to help you. You need to get a 10 yard chunk to get to the second 10 or second and eight or something like that. And then you can run mm-hmm. the ball. Um, but uh, I do agree that we need to focus on that and avoiding those penalties are going to allow us to do just that. Yeah. Uh, Dylan says we make halftime adjustments. That's something new. hundred <laughs> percent agree. Uh, we just kept trying I, I don't the know same if the thing. Team, but... The players got screamed at at halftime at all in the last couple of years, uh, but I could tell that they definitely got a good chewing out at both halftimes this season. So I don't know if that's helping, but it's definitely not hurting. Well, when you have a coach not afraid to call you out yeah. and say this is this is what we're doing wrong, and we are going to do it different, and we are going to do it better. Yeah, um, I'd like to see. I like to see some of those changes made earlier on, um, maybe you know a little bit after the first quarter, halfway through the second, versus waiting till that halftime. But if it takes getting guys in the locker room and saying, "Hey, no kidding, here's what they're doing. You are doing X, Y, and Z wrong, and you will fix this in the second half." Yeah. Not not to be mean, but the, that's what the coaches are there for: is to push those players to do better. And that's well, something I don't think they're used to. To be honest so with you, this is why you know this is why we see you know Vic Fangio coming out and defending Garrett Bowles to the media. And, you know, not throwing him under the bus there, but you can be sure that when it's just those guys together in, a, in meeting rooms alone, there's no mercy coming from this coaching staff. They nope. are going to tell you what you're doing wrong. They're going to tell you what you're doing wrong in front of your teammates, and your teammates are going to be expected to come and help you learn how to do it better. They're not going to throw you under the bus to the media. They're not going to throw you to the sharks, but they're going to make sure that inside the building, you know what you need to be working on. I'd be very concerned if Vic Fangio went out there and threw any of the players under the bus. Yeah. That is a huge sign of toxic leadership. So even though we, and I think Garrett Bowles is the prime example, not trying to talk bad about him, but somebody who's struggling as much as he is for, for Vic Fangio to go out and say publicly, he is our guy, not because of, you know, necessity, but he's portraying that, Hey, we're going to keep working on this. And he is that guy that we're going to have there. Uh, well, and, you know, Emmanuel Sanders said today yeah. it's a brotherhood. That's it. You know, it's it's guys who n- are in this together. They all know it, and they all owe something to each other, and they just want to make sure they're getting the best out of each other because they're all they're all giving their best. Uh, let's see. James says maybe if Flacco played less under center, that might help number seventy two. Interesting idea. Um, David, what do you think I mean, about that? I haven't thought about that yet. 
it's but, but it's it's just not the way this offense plays and establishes the no. run this 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 offense runs from under center it's right. you know that's just the way the scheme works that's how all of the plays are drawn up and that's where the pass comes from so i you agree. may be able to hide garrett Bowles with maybe some I'm more gonna... shotgun but right maybe, yeah, I'm gonna but... Be, maybe i'll play devil's advocate here for a second i yeah. get what you're saying yeah. i agree with what you're saying mm-hmm. but when we have a problem on the left tackle that is holding us back, would it be benefit? I understand the coach wants to in- implement his system, train his players to his system. Yeah. But in the case of what we're experiencing right now, would it be beneficial to n- adjusting his game plan to something like that? Where, hey, let's try some, let's try something new and see if it helps us out until we improve on some of these key positions. And it's still his system, but it's but modified so- to maybe uh, that's just devil's advocate. I don't know if that's true or not, but you know what, if, if it would work, like if you could tell me, yeah, it would work and we wouldn't see a noticeable off a drop off or even, you know, an uptick in offensive production. Sure. Great. I'm all for it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, anything to cover up the, the disaster that's going on on that left side. I just don't, I don't have a lot of faith that it would work in the short term. Um, And you know, that's why you're, that's why you would do it is to get short term results right right away. I I just don't, you know that that I don't. It's it's kind of like the same the same case to me as as moving Dalton Reisner over from guard to left tackle. Is, just now you're creating fix. two holes. You know you're you're taking all the other guys out of their comfort zone. You know maybe and you know of course they have shotgun plays in the Scangarello offense too, but not you know not three or four pages of them. So you're you're making guys do something that they may not necessarily be comfortable with, putting them in positions to play differently than they've been you know, in training camp and practice has been taught to play to cover up the deficiencies of one guy, you know? Yeah. Uh, Dylan says adapt, but I think that's what we're talking about here is it's a quick fix. And we just, we've seen so many quick fixes over the past that I think it's important for coach Fangio to really lay down the foundation uh, to the players of what his scheme is. So that when he's here next year and the year after, I think, I don't want to jinx anything or, or be a negative Nelly here, but if John Elway were to get fired in a couple years, I would like to believe that Vic Vangio is the type of coach that whoever the new GM is would want to stay on because of what he's done in his scheme for his team in terms of trusting him and not completely starting over again with another new head coach because we all know yeah. Broncos country cannot, well, will will not – put up with that very well you know what yeah, i mean right. yeah. so i think him really incorporating what it is what he is as a head coach early on is more beneficial over the long run yeah absolutely um totally agree and i just i think that right now we're not building for this year yeah. as, as much as it stinks to say it because you know you don't like to admit that maybe the season and it's week two because anything could still happen. So you don't want to say the season's lost already because no, that's kind no, of it's week two out of 16. Yeah, no, 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 for sure. Yeah. But at the same time, I think it is less a question for this coaching staff of figuring out a way to win the next three weeks as, it, you know, of course they want to win football games. That's what they're here to do. But they want to make sure that over the long run, as they establish these trends, it's more important to get these guys to do it right over the long term than to get them do, to do some things right over the short term and neglect the other things. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, Key says, Flacco did run last game, turn it, didn't turn out well. No, it didn't. <laughs> Flacco is not a running quarterback by any means. Not a mobile man. Boy. Yeah. It's kind of like, you, I don't know if anybody watches Cowboys. I mean, they're on all the time, so I don't know how you could miss them, but it's kind of like watching Jason Witten run after he's caught a ball. <laughs> I mean, he still catches them, but good Lord, he looks Trying like to he's run walking. After that. He looks like he's walking out there. Oh, man. Um, Joey asks, over under on us drafting a, a left tackle next year. I don't yeah. know if it's, it's too soon to talk about that, but. No bet. No bet. No, no bet. bet. Mm-hmm. Uh, bottom line, we're going to need to find someone from somewhere. Yeah. And it's it might be Garrett Bowles if he gets fixed. But as somebody else I heard say, you know, he could get fixed, he could improve, but I have no faith that that'll happen. I so have yet to see time it thus will far this season. Yeah, time will tell, but mm-hmm. here we are. It's time uh, right now. Let's see, Mark, how you doing? Uh, we got uh, Neil. Basically, all I'm going to say to you, Neil, is we need a lot of what Manning did 
or what he brought to the team. I think that's on field leadership um, is the big one for me. So we'll see there. Um, okay, David, let's start kind of thinking about uh, we're, we're past this game. We're yeah. done with this game. Yeah. Let's forget the last two weeks. And I don't want to spoil the pregame podcast, which remember, guys, we'd have a pregame, postgame podcast, pregame show, halftime show, postgame show. We got all this stuff for you here at Orange Weekly. We're even writing blogs now, too. So, I mean, we've, we've got you covered. Uh, but in terms of looking forward, uh, what, are, what are some of your expectations for this team uh, on Sunday morning? Play better than they did well, on Sunday. <laughs> because yes. <laughs> that, I mean, and it sounds simple, but that they did on Sunday. They played better than they, they did. did on mo- last Monday night. Yep. Not a lot better, but it was better. It's in the right direction, right? It's it. And so if it's going to be incremental improvements, it's better than backsliding. And if it's incremental improvements and it starts to get a little more, incre- like, you know, they start to build on these improvements every week, that'll be a little more encouraging still. So that's what I'm going to be looking at. Get better by a wider amount this week than you did last week over the week before, if that makes sense. And it's a tough, t- tough test. You know, Lambeau Field, it's not, you know, December or anything, but it's still Lambeau Field. And oh, you Lambeau. know that is going to be a madhouse. The Bron- you know, it's like I said earlier, it's a young team. They're going to have to play in that environment. They're probably not going to be able to hear each other that well. And so that makes executing the basics really, really important this week. And if you can do that, if they can go out there and show me some consistency in executing the basics this week and doing it consistently, every single drive, not for one quarter, disappear for a quarter, disappear for a quarter, back for another quarter. Yeah. If you do it the whole game or even three quarters of the game this season, this week, at least, you know, I'll, I'll, even if we lose that, I'll expect that to be a very, very close game and competitive right till the end. Uh, Ulysses. I'm, uh, yeah, I don't have good depth reading or you know far away reading even with the glasses. Uh, do we have the right players for the system on both sides of the ball? So uh, that's a good question. Do we have a loft problem, lack of freaking talent? Um, is this <laughs> is this system something that like we were talking about earlier? We add a couple key pieces, and all of a sudden things kind of really fall into place. No, not right now. Um, cause I think the team's still coming together from a chemistry standpoint as well. Uh, and that's going to take a little longer with the coaching staff. They're still building chemistry. And I think that's more what you're seeing on the field than a lack of talent right now. You see Emmanuel Sanders go out there and play like he was, you know, five years younger. You see Cortland Sutton going out there and developing into a big time receiver who knows how to do more than just catch jump balls. He knows how to run routes, keep aware of the sticks, get yards after the catch, Uh, You're seeing Royce Freeman blossom like, you know, we've talked about all show long Royce Freeman and his his abilities and and how he's coming along. It's just going to take a little more time. I think I don't think it's a lack of talent for inside the scheme uh, on defense, you know, maybe that secondary, but it's, you know, it's tough to find a real deep secondary in the NFL that has that's too deep at every position or, you know, it just doesn't happen. Uh, So you know, we're about as we, we do have lack of depth, especially along that offensive line. That's something that I'm really concerned about. And frankly, one area that that our drafting has let us down the most over the years. We just have not been able to keep depth guys on the offensive line or develop them into at least backup level talent uh, at the NFL level. It just hasn't happened. So but we again, I've talked about it. That's kind of a league wide problem. Yeah. We're not you know, we're not a talented enough roster to make the playoffs. And I think we've all we can all agree on that at this point. But on paper, we're not a talent, a bad enough team to go five and eleven. Yeah, we're just gonna, you know, we're just gonna have to see how the season plays out from there. This season is grow on next season, man. And with this coaching staff, I think that's what we're exactly what we're going to see. Uh, Alonzo, in your comment about uh, Flacco going on the boot, bootleg more, uh, the response I have to that is we have to get the other team to fear the run game. We have to get them to believe that we're going to run the ball when we fake that handoff. Otherwise, if, if they know that we don't have much of a run game so that it doesn't matter if there's not everyone there, uh, they just know that it's probably going to be some sort of trick, well, then it, it, it's not serving its purpose. So uh, you're not going to see many bootlegs, in my opinion, David, unless we have a – once we establish the really That's solid, it. scary run game, now we have options. Yeah, no, you can't – unless they re- respect your run game, a bootleg's not going to do you any favors. 
Um, Keith uh, saying Lindsay doesn't look like he is running with the same fire he had last year. And Keith, I think you're right. Yep. Um, I think you're. I, it does go a little bit back to kind of what, just what we've been saying that it's going to take a little time. I think when you're seeing Lindsay out there look a little slower, I think it's due to the fact that he's still thinking now. I think he's thinking a little more than he had to in last year's offense of what he's supposed. What you know, where his hole is, what his cutback is, and I think he's still kind of processing that and getting up to speed in a Scangarello offense. I, he's another factor that I think is going to get better as the year improves. He's going to get that systems and that scheme down a little bit more. He's going to know intuitively where he's supposed to go and when, and I think you're going to see his production come up a little bit more as the year goes. I think you're also going to see it improve. The entire run game as a whole improve once we yeah. get uh, – um, his name just escaped me. Our um, fullback, Janovich. No, Janovich. Yeah, once absolutely. We get Janovich back. Having Andy Janovich back is going to be a huge help to this offense. Yeah, so give it another month, guys, and I think you're going to see a huge improvement on the run game, which, like we talked about, is going to improve, you know, giving us some bootleg options. It can improve in our in-pass game. And, yeah. you know, if we've improved on other things in the meantime, look, we could be looking at a team that might, you know, should be winning several more football games than mm-hmm. what we're looking at right now. Yeah. Um, okay, David, uh, let's start heading on out, guys. Before you before you leave, again, uh, my name is Kev Dan. It's David. We're here every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Make sure you check out our pregame, postgame podcast on SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, yawn and on and on. Uh, uh, check like, out our website, retweet, Broncos. Share, all of the above. All of the above. Website, all that stuff. So, David, closing thoughts. Let's see. Hold on. Okay, yep. Closing thoughts over to you, buddy. Uh, it's just we're, we're in a weird position as Broncos fans right now because our team is not that far away, and at the same time, the – goals that we have to surmount to get there seem really really high you know like there's not maybe that many but the ones that there are are kind of big deals and are going to be hard issues to fix uh at least as far as getting us into contention for you know playing meaningful football after thanksgiving um we're just going to have to wait and see as far as that goes guys it's probably going to take a little longer but there are things to build on even on offense an offense that looks sluggish for the first couple of weeks but has those moments makes you think that maybe those moments are going to become more and more as the season goes along there's at least plenty of reasons to watch there's a lot of good storylines on this team to to develop um just give them time we're going to have to give them time this year um it's going to be tough to watch sometimes we're going to come up against these good teams and at times we're going to look silly but we're not going to look silly every week. I yeah. think we're going to be respectable to, you know, respectable at contention for at least not a losing record at the end of the season. And we'll go from there. That's yeah. as far as I'm ahead on, as I'm looking right now, if we can build on that, that's super. Uh, Sean, when will uh, Bryce Callahan return? I'm expecting him and Todd Davis to come back next week. That's just my opinion. I'm not an expert, uh, but we will see, and I will keep you guys updated especially on the pregame show of what we're expecting based off the injury report. Keith says, good show, guys. Check, uh, check you na- next week. Thanks again for everyone watching. I'm going to give you my closing thoughts here. Um, pull up the schedule for just a quick second. So, look, loss, loss. we got Green Bay on the road. We're coming back home against Jacksonville, who is, you know, they're trying to trade away their top cornerback. Uh, and and we'll then, be starting Gardner Minshew. All, all of them, yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that might, that might be a little more interesting game than we originally thought. On the road, the Chargers, and the Chargers just lost um, to Detroit. And yep. playing away in the Chargers stadium is basically a home game for us. So if you're in yep. the California area, please go out. We want that stadium to be completely orange if possible. So Slaughter with orange. Exactly. So, I mean, look, guys, if we keep growing just a little bit and getting a little bit better, um, these games may not be as far-fetched of a win possibility as we originally thought or after what our 0-2 record is saying. But we've got to put together more and more and more of a complete game. That's what I'm looking for this week is not sitting out for two and a half quarters in a row. Uh, The other thing to keep in mind, guys, is not to, again, be negative, but the Broncos have the longest losing streak right now in the NFL. We have lost six games in a row going back to last season. So we need to end that. And the the players know that. Players know those stats. They feel the pressure. They want to perform well. That's because it's their paycheck on the line. But... They they want to do well for uh, the fans. The so players I'm want expecting... it worse than any fan wants it for the players. Right. Absolutely, without question. So these guys are going to come out strong. Uh, I hope Green, I kind of hope Green Bay expects to just automatically win because I want to catch them off guard. 
No. Uh, Vic Fangio, I think, is putting together good game plans. I think uh, Scangarillo is putting together good game plans. We make a couple improvements. We get a couple healthy uh, injured well injured players back healthy on the field. This this could be a very interesting game in a good way. So that's my take. Uh, David, anything else before we head on out? No, nah, that's it for me, man. Cool. Uh, just you know, yeah, absolutely. Hey, great show tonight. That's one more thing. Great, great show tonight. Everybody, lots of comments, lots of questions, some controversy. I loved it, guys. I love you guys controversy. Really brought the energy it gets tonight. us talking. Yeah, keep it flowing. Bring it on every week, guys. I love it. Keep us, keep coming back because we're going to be here for you every single week. Exactly. We are here for you guys. Period. Dot the end. So we will see you. I might see you earlier this week, uh, later this week, but we do have those podcasts, like I said. And then, if anything, Sunday morning, uh, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, uh, an hour before the game kicks off, we will uh, all be here at least uh, helping you guys or talking to you guys throughout the uh, the pregame portion of Orange. So, thanks for everyone watching. You guys are fantastic. David, you are fantastic. Everyone is fantastic. You guys are, are awesome. Broncos country is awesome. We will see you guys all later. Thanks for joining. David, have a good night, man. As always, go Broncos. Go Broncos. Catch you later.